Hi, welcome to BS Garage. On this one, I screwed up on my fuel system just a little bit, but we fixed it all and she's better than ever. Let's go. Yeah, story time. I am was gonna take the car down to a local car show. It's about an hour away from my house. I'm on my way there. And I'm noticing on my digital dash that the fuel pressure just kept dropping and dropping and dropping. And slowly but surely, like I wasn't even able to give it enough throttle to get it out of the hole or like to accelerate at a reasonable pace because of lack of fuel pressure. Like it just wasn't there in order to feed the engine in order to make it move. Um, very stressful because I was about halfway there and I was like, I gotta turn this thing around. I gotta limp it back home. And I obviously I managed to get it back home, thankfully. Didn't hurt the engine. I just kept my eyes on the air fuel ratio and just like ease into the throttle ever so slightly. But my thinking is I have like a fuel filter plugged issue. So obviously I'm just not getting the the feed that it needs, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go through the entire fuel system, just diagnose it. I'm gonna go through the electrical to the pump first, cause that's the easiest part. And then I'm gonna go through and just start, you know, I'll pull the pump, I'll test the pump, look at the filters and go from there, maybe the fuel pressure regulator, but I'm just gonna start in the back, work my way forward. And that's kind of the plan for this one. We're gonna figure this out to get it back on the road. Remember this access panel that I made? Yeah, totally worth it for situations exactly like this. So I went ahead, I unplugged the main plug to the fuel pump and I tested it. I just wanted to make sure that I'm getting a full 12 solid volts to it when I turn the key on and it does. So I know that my voltage is good as far as I can tell. Like, I don't think there's any other reason. I mean, it wasn't a bad ground or anything like that. So I think that this electrical part of it is good to go. So next up, I'm actually gonna pull the pump out and I'm gonna check just the, the main filter, the sock filter on that and make sure that that's okay. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do right now. Got the pump out. Gonna have to shine a light down there to kind of inspect the inside of the tank, see how much junk I got down in there. But um, the bottom of the filter, I think we're finding our issue. Look at how much crap is on there. What am I doing? I swear I blew out all my lines and cleaned them out. Now I know next car I build, I'm gonna do an extra good job of making sure that I clean this thing out completely. Look at how much crap is on there. That is insane. So yeah, I'm gonna clean this up and then I'll inspect the tank here in a minute. Got my secondary filter here and I am running an Aeromotive filter so it's not some name brand Chinese crap garbage see kind of what we got in here. I have not opened this up yet. That looks pretty good. I mean, I don't see anything that would make me think I'm not getting any pressure, but it could be so like tiny, I don't even know. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this off of here and look at it more. I might order a new one of these. I guess we'll find out here in a second. I went through my stockpile of parts that I had and I found this fuel filter here and I think this is gonna work a ton better because it doesn't have, it basically it can't suck itself shut like this one can because there's no like standoffs or anything like that on this guy here in order to keep that from happening. So you get enough garbage on this side, it's just gonna collapse itself and then it has no room to suck anything, fuel um through it but this one has like little plastic standoffs there and a plastic hard bottom so that it utilizes the whole sock instead of just the area where it's sucking through on this guy so that's it's kind of a dumb design but i'm glad i found this thing hopefully i'll find like um a part number or something that you can pick these up on maybe like amazon or ebay or something like that i'll try to find that and then list it in the description below but this just looks like such such a much better option. Everything's all back together, got the main power on. So I'm gonna go ahead and test it 
because before when I would turn the key, she'd only get up to like 20 or 30 PSI of pressure when she should be around 58 is what I got the regulator set at. So let's... That actually already sounds way better. So she's dropping from 30. So that's already better. That's my gauge right there for it. Um, let me set up. I can kind of see it. You can kind of see the regulator right there. But let's set it up like this so we can see it together. How can we, how can we do this? Ooh, how about like this? Hey, there we go. Okay, so here's the regulator right here. I'm actually going to replace this. I ordered some parts, but I got a Holly one that's been lying around from a different project, um, the Malibu. But I replaced that with an Aeromotive, so now I'm going to switch over to um, the Holly later. But that's, we'll get to that after that. But I want to see, like, how far she shoots up now. Oh, yeah, look at that. She had, like, 60 all day long, from what I can see from here. Awesome. Guess now I'm just gonna fire it up. Um, just kind of see where it maintains because before it was like, like I said, only like 20, 30. When it should be like right at 58. Make sure I don't have any fuel leaks. gonna go ahead and do a while I'm in there so I got the fuel sender unit out um, for the fuel gauge and I don't think I had it set up properly for the ohms of resistance that the Holly ECU would recognize in order to calibrate my gauge correctly if that makes sense so I'm gonna go through use my multimeter figure out what it is on empty figure out what it is on full and then that should get my um, gauge a little bit more accurate so I don't know where my brain was at when I initially set this thing up but it was down here further and like well, it just wasn't set up properly, and so it had to be moved up quite a bit. And then I went ahead and tested out what the resistance was. So I'm going to see if I can do this one-handed here. Actually, I could just put that. Put. Nope. There we go. So yeah, so that's the sender right there, and then that's just grounded out. And if I do that, so 146 is empty raise it up to full it should be like 33 it's like yeah 35 is full so now i can take those numbers and i can program it into the range of resistance for the gauge to read from full to empty so i'm in my dash let me see if I can show you guys this in real time. So menu, customize, cancel. I don't want that menu. Configure, dash configuration. And these are all my inputs and outputs. Um, so I have the fuel gauge set up as an input on the back. Fuel right there, custom ohms. We can go into settings here. Yeah, so it says, yeah, obviously I have the setup wrong. So value zero, so that's empty, should be 
246. Clear that out. Go 246. Okay. Then we'll scroll down to full, which should be 100. So value is a 100%. 33. So, yep, that's good there. Um, we want to linearize X. There we go. So that makes all the values even. So it has a straight shot up and down. We should be good to go there. So now the ohms of resistance should oh, cancel. Cancel that. What are we doing here? Escape. So yeah, now all these values are, you know, evenly distributed to match up with your full to empty range for the gauge to read correctly. So we'll save that. Okay. Okay. Dashboard. And it's actually, it's reading 100 right now because it's not hooked up, but now I'm gonna put that thing back in there and we should be good to go. It's honestly been a few days. Um, finally got all the parts in to change this one out for the Holly setup that I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tear it down. I gotta switch a few things over on it. Ignore this for now. Um, so I gotta flip this around in order to get my vacuum reference port or boost reference port on that side. And I just kind of bent up a little bracket in order to make it fit, but it should be pretty straightforward. And these are all the fittings in order to tie it in real quick. Um, so let me just get that knocked out and I'll show you. Got everything switched around. New bracket on there. So it should just be Fairly simple to plug everything back in. And then we gotta set the fuel pressure again in order to make sure we're at that 58 that we want. Gotta run it, make sure I had no fuel leaks. Gotta set at 58 PSI, both on here and on the gauge for the Holly Digital Dash. So should be good to go, fairly straightforward. I like the routing a lot better. I did like an angle fitting here to get my flex fuel sensor. And then the regular sensor, the pressure sensor, like right in line. This looks a little bit cleaner to me. It's just like a better unit all around. So very happy with that. And we'll use the other one on our future project. But more gooder. There we go. Went through the entire fuel system. I highly recommend that. If you have a fresh build or something like that, just look through all your filters. Check everything again just to make sure you're not like in a situation where I was, where I was like, sweating my ass off trying to get the thing home making sure that i wasn't running the thing too lean and it was just total limp mode it sucked um just make sure that your filter is correct and everything is where it should be because that could just that could end your day real quick but she's all wrapped up good to go now i have a little bit more tuning to do in order to dial it back in because i mean driving it for about a half an hour on low fuel pressure really mess with the tables I bet uh in the learn mode so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna change some stuff out driving around a bit but I gotta wait for the weather to clear up in order to do that made it this far in the video hit that like hit that subscribe got a lot more coming up thanks guys